Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Com Report. Wherever you get your podcast, you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And of course, I'm doing a daily training camp update for the commanders. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week, five daily updates. So keep tuning in for that and trying to give you a feel for what's going on in training camp, what's going on with the commanders, some position battles, et cetera. And don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I have several stories up now on Brian Robinson, Chase Young, the excitement over the with the fans coming back in, in bigger numbers this year, et cetera. And then also today, there's a story on linebacker Jamin Davis. Not a good one, folks. And, you know, it could result in jail time for Davis. So he was charged with going 114 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone in Loudoun County. This happened on March 28th, 2022. So today, the um, there was the, he was in court today. Had a, initially he had been convicted of of reckless driving in Virginia. That means that you could be punishable for to up to one year in prison and a twenty five hundred dollar fine. So Davis appealed the conviction for reckless driving. At first, was going to have a jury trial, and then um, negotiated a plea deal in which he would have received no more would have been no more than eight days of incarceration, active incarceration. The judge rejected that deal. So now he'll be sentenced on Thursday. So now you're caught up to speed on that. It is Davis was charged on December 19th, 2021 with 80 going 89 and 65. That would have been reckless driving, but it was amended down to an 84 and a 65, which changed, which lowered the um, charge and resulted in only $150 fine. Anyways, don't know what's going to happen, but now you're caught up to speed on that. So let's get back to the field. Today on Monday, there were no fans in attendance. This was not a day for the fans. So they'll be back tomorrow. And that's also when the pads will come on for the first time. That is always a fun day in training camp. And so that's what's going to happen. So if you're coming out, that's that's what you're going to see. Anyway, let's get to, again, now let's get onto the field. So let's start with the defensive backs room because I've been telling you, I think they've been having a very good camp and a couple of guys in particular listen i think a few of them are having a good camp i mean i think emmanuel forbes and Quan martin look like very solid rookies for them and i think guys like kendall fuller just a solid vet plays well in this zone match system he's a smart he's a smart at corners you're going to find and so i think that helps benjamin st Just having a really really good camp danny johnson very consistent camp i think that's kind of what he's become is a consistent backup for them so, but the guy I want to talk about today is Cam Curl because don't forget the guys there, man. This guy can still play, and he's he of course is up for a contract extension or any or or he'll become a free agent after the season. The kid can play, and what I've always now you know this, I've always appreciated the fact that he's typically in the right spot to take plays away, and it's funny because you saw that today because there was one time, and it's his execution, et cetera. There's one time he's covering, he's lined up over Logan Thomas in the slot snap goes and it looks like man coverage and he drops into his own. They drop into his own, but curl takes away that underneath outside area for Sam Howell. And he's got to work to the other side, but it's just, I think that ability to disguise coverage is something I keep seeing out here. And that stems from a couple of things. One, they're smart Two, This is the second year in this particular coverage scheme and the fourth year in this defense. And I think it shows and it shows and they were, they listen, I think they've done a good job. There have been some areas where they haven't put together a good unit yet. And you can look to the offensive line as like a lot of questions still there. But I think in the D back room, I like what they've put together just in terms of the kind of players they have there and the kind of the kind of guys. It's not just that they're good guys. I mean, you know, I think I'm a good guy. You don't want me in that defensive back room. But I think Bram's a good guy. You don't want Bram back there. Anyway, but what they have are guys who are, are, I think, take football seriously, study, work at it, et cetera. And I think it translates to good communication, working together. You see a lot of times, I mean, they're going to make mistakes, but you see a lot of times guys dropping, handing guys off, dropping and, you know, making it look like one thing, dropping it to something else. I told you the other day about St. Juiced, sometimes looking like it's going to be press man starts to fake the press and it forces the receiver to take a different release off the line, which slows them a little bit. 
and and then and then they take away with an angle. There have been a lot of things like that. So that's one of the things. But so I told you about that play with curl. Well, on the next play, that communication kind of gets highlighted because because of a pre-snap look. I'm not going to go into detail on all that stuff because I honestly you don't have to, I don't have time to track um, all the alignments, all the formations, etc. So. What I do know is that on this play, Cam Curl picks off a pass that was intended for Jahan Dotson going across the middle. But what I also know is that before the snap, St. Juiced and shouts out something to Curl who gets the whatever the you know the defensive audible or defensive call or whatever from, from Curl and the adjustment based on that communication. And he was in the right spot. And it was not a spot that Sam Howell was expecting to be. So Dotson was would have been was breaking open. But Curl's sitting right there, so the ball's a little bit wide. Curl was there and ready to pounce, and he did. So that's, I think, a direct result of some of that, the the all the things I've been talking about with the secondary. And again, they've done a really nice job. And, you know, I again, I keep pointing out St. Juice because I think he's having a terrific camp. And watching him, one of the things that's kind of good for this group is going up against different styles of receivers. Terry McLaurin is different than Jahan Dotson. I think Jahan gives a little bit more shake at the top of a route. I think Terry's releases are, are something that they have to contend with because Terry will change his release based on the corner, does a lot of scouting with that. Um, I think Jahan at the top of the route can create better separation. So it gives you different things to work on. And St. Juiced can go up against a McLaurin and he can be physical with him and he has good, strong hands. And so I think that helps him. Then he can cover a guy like St. Juiced in the slot He's got the length. He's got the quickness. And there was one time where today I'm like, okay, watching that particular matchup. And I'm thinking, Jahan looks like he put some nice little, nice little shake at the top, wondering what's going to happen. And it really didn't create anything. St. Juice stayed on him and, and basically took the route away. So I think he's done a nice job. But again, I think that entire defensive backs, uh, the defensive backs room, Derek Forrest, good camp. I think Percy Butler having a quiet, but good camp. He's been working both those guys have been rotating with the ones. So both of those guys are going to get some action. And I think, I think that just, it bodes well for that defense. Um, still got to figure out linebacker because you need all the stuff with Jamin Davis off the field now aside. And I have no clue what's going to happen. And um, you know, with jail time, would it be during the season, after the season, whatever. What I do know is on the field, he has to be better. And I think Cody Barton has actually done a nice job this summer um, Khalid Hudson working a lot with the ones Davis had been working with the twos largely because he missed a lot of time in the spring and they had installed some, or they had tweaked some things with their calls, with the cover, with the, with just with their calls. And they want Davis up to speed before they work him fully with the ones. Now he's got to get up to speed. And if he's not, you have to question why is he not up to speed at a certain point? They did have him come in with the rookies last weekend to help him with that, but he did, he pretty much missed all the spring in, in that area. So it could take a minute to get up to speed. It gives a guy like Khalid Hudson a chance to show more of what he can do. And again, Davis has got to ascend as a player this year, third year behind this group. If you're, if it's not going to show in a consistent way this year, then, then there you go. So that's, that's one thing on the linebackers. Um, Again, Hudson and, and, and Barton, I think Barton is, like I said, I think Barton's done a nice job seems to be playing faster than he was in the spring. There's a lot of times where it's like, oh, Barton may have gotten that one on the, whether it's defending a screen, whether it's a pass in a certain area, he seems to be playing faster. And one of the things I like with Kalik Hudson is I think he plays really fast against the run. We saw that against Dallas. Um, I haven't, I think the one area where he struggles more is covering backs out of the backfield against tight ends. He seems to have done a nice job. And I think there was one play today. They ran a hurry up um, offense situation when they would huddle up after incompletion, but they would, um, after a completed pass, you get up to the line, you're going. So there was one time they're in the red zone. I think it was like around the five yard line, a little sprint rollout to the right by Howell and Hudson is covering Logan Thomas on that really good angle. Thomas catches the ball but Hudson gets him at like the one or two yard line. So it would have prevented a touchdown, but it was a you know nice job by Hudson all around. But I, what I also like on the play is you're looking for Logan Thomas in the red zone because it didn't happen enough last year, not nearly at all. Anyway, let's get back to, let's get to the offensive line. I think one guy there that I'm going to keep, keep keeping an eye on is 
second year Chris Paul, because I do think he's going to factor into the starting group at some point this year. If Sadiq Charles doesn't show more, I think Paul continues to get a little better. Coaches do like what they've seen from him. They're giving Charles the first chance. And if he, again, if he slips, I mean, I think Paul would be right there. And he, Paul is in better shape this year. He's working a lot at left guard with the second unit, doing a good job. I think he's a little bit more consistent. Last year, you'd watch him say, oh, he looks athletic, but he's raw. I don't see as much of that rawness this year. I just see a better player and a more conditioned player. And he also worked, took some snaps with the starters in 11 on 11 at right guard. Not a knock on Cosme as much as it is wanting to see Paul, excuse me, against a stronger competition than what he's facing with the second unit. So you get to go up against a Duran Payne and players like that. So I just think he's a guy to keep watching and how he could factor down the road. And, you know, to be honest, I think, you know, he's, well, I think he's, I think he's in a good spot and I think they could have something there. We talked about, I talked about this with you last year toward the end of the year that I, that he was a guy that they really liked the defensive lineman talk about his strength. And so, you know, there you go. Um, on the D line, one guy that, you know, watched a little bit is Fedarian Mathis because, you know, it's, it's funny because he's, he's a little bit forgotten because, and he was a second round pick last year, but the injury, he's not a starter because you've got your starters there, but he provides really good depth. And the one thing he does is he plays a stout middle. I don't know that he'll ever be really much of a pass rusher, but he can clog the middle. So when they go, especially if they go to a five line, five lineman set, he can play over that nose and allow his pain and Allen to do different things alongside him. If they go into it, sometimes you get those four man looks where you want someone shaded on the nose. He can play that too, which gives pain a little bit of a break because that's what he does now. So I think he'll add something there again. I don't, not sure about as a pass rusher, but I think as a run stopper that he does a nice job. The adventure park is zip lining through the trees. It's climbing from platform to platform. It's even an ax throwing competition with your friends. But what the adventure park really is, is opportunity. Reconnecting with friends and family, accomplishing a challenge and making lasting memories. So book your visit today and choose your own adventure. Um, again, going back to Paul, I want to see him against better competition. One of the things when the pads come on for both those guys is you start to see more of what they can do. And this starts Tuesday. So they're, the pad work is always a big, big deal for the O-line and D-line groups. Because again, before then, it's hard to get a great feel. I think with the D-backs and the receivers, you can get a little bit better feel for what they're doing before the pads come on. But with, with other positions, linebackers and all that, I think you need to see what they can do. So... Um, one of the other things, too, let's talk about Sam Howell. Um, I think one of the things, he did not have a good day Saturday. He had a better day today. I wouldn't say it was a great day, but it was a better day than it was Saturday. Wasn't very good then. And it's not always just on him. Sometimes the old line, the old line has got to be better. Um, but sometimes it is on Howell. And one, one of the things that you, you know, you want to see the indication as far as, um, I think one thing they really like with him is the ability to self-correct knows what he's doing wrong. That's a big key because I think and if you don't know that, you're kind of going to be in trouble. But they do like that he does know that. And that's that's good. He's still developing. The offense is still developing. So when you talk about this stuff, you have to keep it, contextualize it. Is it time for panic? No, of course not. Is it time to say, okay, you got to see more? Yeah, of course, because you do need to see more. This is a This is still a big question mark for them is, you know, you can have all the faith you in the world you want in, in how, but you still have to see it and you don't know when it will manifest itself. Does he have enough around him on the line to give him the kind of protection that he's going to need to be able to get through his reads, et cetera? Will, you know, so all that stuff takes time. And that's where we're at now on the first with the first offense did um, they did. They again, they, I told you they did the hurry up drill against the defense. He had a couple of nice plays in there. And there's some, you know, throws a little bit off, but sometimes timing, sometimes you don't, you know, you need to know why that happened. So, but with a couple of plays that I like, there's one where he hits Dotson over the middle. But what I liked on the play is takes a three-step drop. Nothing's there. He slides to his left to create more of an opening for himself. And then he hits Howell over the middle. A nice job by getting away from the pressure. Um, and then on, on a, he had a, t a touchdown pass to Terry McCorn, corner of the end zone. It was on the ninth play of the drive. Really good route by McCorn. Just gets into gets into Fuller, kind of shakes in, breaks back out, creates an 
several yards of separation, but the ball was right there from McLaurin. And afterwards, uh, Terry yelled out, good ball, yelled it out. So now you know. But that was a good throw. Then on the number two offense, Jacoby Brissett goes in on his fourth play. He hits Byron Pringle. I, I would say from, it's hard to tell where I was standing because I stand behind, way behind the play to get a feel for all, you know, see, to try and look at matchups along the line, along whatever. So I couldn't, I think that it was around the 30 yard line. So it would have been like a 30 yard touchdown pass to Pringle. Pringle's a guy to keep your eye on because he continues to get a lot of run with, with the upper groups, right? The ones and the twos. And he's a guy that I think is definitely going to factor into one of those last two. Well, assuming they keep six receivers, he's going to factor one of those last two spots and he is getting a lot of work. <laughs> All right. Um, the other, the other thing I would talk about with the offense, and again, I think with the line, it takes time to mesh. They clearly have not meshed yet. And you have a new, you have a new center, you have a new right guard, you have a new left guard in Charles essentially, and, and you have a new right tackle. So it does take time. So after practice, one of the things we watch was uh, off, uh, offensive assistant Juan Castillo going over um, with Sam Cosme and, and Wiley, just some stunts, how to handle, especially with Cosme, how to handle certain stunts and when to, how to cheat maybe with your vision on a play to help you handle the stunt a little bit better. And so those are some of the things you were, and that's, that was something they work on. They always go over these details, but that's one thing I was watching today at the end of practice, just to, just to see. And one of the things that Rivera talked about, as far as you remember two years ago, he talked a lot about the maturity of this group of the group. And that was the number one thing he was con concerned about in 2021. He kept saying it. He's worried about the maturity. He wondered if they were mature enough. Well, he's seeing that more now. And he sees like a lot of groups staying after practice and working on certain things on their own. That's when, you know, you start to have something. You started to see that last year. He sees it with the defensive backs. He's talked about it with the defensive line. And I think when you start to get that, that's when you get a little bit further ahead yeah that's when you can advance more as a team and it shows that there's a different maturity level about this team how that translates it's going to translate as well as that o-line and quarterback play becomes to be honest because if you don't get that you know it's i think the defense could be really really good but that offense needs to come through to for this team to take a step this year in a very pivotal year for everybody involved one of the guys that i've been paying attention to tight end curtis hodges i think he's had a a pretty good camp. I think there's some things that he's shown. I think he's shown athleticism. He's a big dude. I think he runs well. He's got to, he's got to catch the ball just a little bit better, but you saw it today, did a nice job on a couple routes, but he, um, I think he, I like, I just, I like the athleticism and you see, you know, I think some downfield and some crossing throws, we can run away from some guys and he's again, big guy, just like Cole Turner, big guy. Um, but I think he's got a little bit more um, with the athleticism but will he be a better pass catcher? I don't know that yet, but that's what, that's what the one thing to watch. Can he be consistent in that area? And if he is, then they have something. You know, I threw the one guy and I brought him up a few times. Logan Thomas looks like his old self. So I think that's a good sign for them very much. So, but I think as we go forward, one of the big things I'm going to keep watching is on how, how progresses. And a lot of it is, when he hits his plant step is the ball coming out. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. And in the spring, you saw a little bit more, but I think as the defense continues to, to grow, I think it makes it a lot harder on this offense, which is good. But I also think, you know, sometimes uh, the timing could be a little bit better. And so you have to wonder, well, how can it get there? Why isn't it there just yet? A lot of it is it, it's just an experience. It's young. It's a new offense. But they just need, I think the big thing is where are they at a week from now? Where are they at in the Ravens scrimmage? Where are they at after the preseason? They have to keep progressing. That is the key. If they don't, then there are going to be problems. And if they do, then they could then they have a chance to make a little bit of noise because I think that defense will be really good. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll be back on Tuesday with another practice report. Again, you can read my work on ESPN. And there you go. Talk to you next time. <laughs>